Hello. Today we are going to talk about related rates. Related rates problems. In a related rate problem, we have two variables that are related by an equation. Hence, when we take their derivative with respect to some other variable, time in our case, uh, we get an equation where we have two rates of change, derivatives related in an equation. Hence, we have what we call those related rates. So, um, as I go through the problem, uh, that, by the way, this is problem number two in the worked out problems. I'm going to do another one here uh, after this one. But as I go through this, I'll kind of go through the steps. The first thing that we need to do is determine what rate of change we are given and uh, what rate of change we need to find. I would encourage you to look at the, I'm not going to write the problem out because my handwriting isn't that great and you can have it in front of you already. So uh, we are given the rate of change of volume dv dt. Don't worry about the um, value of the rate of change. What's important is what we are given. This is a rate of change of volume. And we want to find dh dt, the rate of change of height, in a cone. The shape of the uh, that we have that the gravel forms is a cone. And so the formula for the volume of a cone is volume is one third pi r squared h. And notice in this case, I have the important variable of V, the rate that I'm given, the important variable of H, the rate that I want to find, and I also have another variable. This other variable we need to eliminate. We have to get rid of that variable. We are told in the problem that um, the height is always two-thirds the base diameter, and of course, the diameter of a circle is twice the radius, and so the height then is four-thirds the radius, which means that the radius is three-fourths of the height. Using this, I can then eliminate the unimportant variable, and we get volume then is two-thirds pi times three-fourths h quantity squared times h, or Volume then becomes, let's see, 9 times 2 is 18, um, pi <clears throat> over uh, 48 h cubed. And if I want, I can simplify this. I could have simplified one of the threes. And um, we get, uh, what do we get? 3 eighths pi h cubed. There we go. Okay, now I have an equation that only involves the important variables. So at this point I will take the derivative with respect to t, time. And we get dv dt is equal to 9 pi over 8 h squared dh dt. Once we take the derivative, so, well, once we take the derivative, I can now use my snapshot value, the value that we want to determine exactly when the rate is changing. And I call this a snapshot value because it's like taking a photograph. Photograph tells you what's happening at that instant in time. That's when we want to know the rate of change at an instant in time. And the snapshot value in this case is when h is equal to 20. And so therefore, I can substitute this in. My dv dt was given as 50 cubic feet per minute is equal to 9 pi over 8, 20 squared dh dt. And we can solve now for dh dt. And this becomes, I'm going to do this kind of old school, this becomes 50 times 8 over 
9 pi times 400. Do it this way. And we can use a calculator, or I'm going to do this. As I said, 50 goes into 400 eight times and eight. And so all we end up with is dhdt is equal to 1 over 9 pi and feet per second. Make sure we put the units in at the end. We don't have to put them in all the way through, but we do have to put them in at the end. This is cubic feet per second. We're dividing it by feet squared. That leaves me with an answer of feet per second. So again, the kind of steps. First, you determine the rate that you're given and what you're going to find. These are the important variables. That's what we do first. Second, we get an equation that relates these important variables. Third, we eliminate non-important variables. Once we get an equation that has only important variables, we take the derivative where it was. And then 5, we use our snapshot value, and then 6, we solve for the rate we wish to find. That's the basic steps that we follow. I'm going to do one more in this section. And let's suppose that I have the following. This time I'm just going to go through. And this is um, problem number four. We have a ladder against a wall. The ladder is 13 feet long. And the bottom of the ladder is slipping out away from the wall at a rate of one half foot per second. And so, and uh, since this rate is the distance that the uh, foot of the ladder is from the base of the wall, since that is changing, that is an important variable. I have to, I'll call that x. And so we are given dx dt. In this case, I want to find the rate of change of the angle between the ladder and the wall. And I'm going to call that theta, if I can draw it. And so we want to find d theta dt. Those are my important variables. Okay, now. I need a, an equation that relates these important variables, x and theta, with the information. In this particular case, we can use the fact that cosine theta is equal to x over 13. And by doing this, I do not have any unimportant variables, any variables that I need to get rid of. So I can skip that part and just go ahead and take the derivative. The derivative negative sine theta d theta dt is equal to 1 13th dx dt. At this point, I uh, use my snapshot value. My snapshot value in this case was when the base of the ladder is 5 feet. So x is equal to 5 feet from the uh, base of the wall. So I'm going to draw a little picture over here again. When x is 5, we know this is 13. And using the Pythagorean theorem, or you may already recognize, this is a 5, 12, 13. 
that won't always come out nice. I just made this one nice. But 5, 12, 13, right triangle. And so now sine theta then is negative 12 over 13. d theta dt is equal to 1 13th. And dx dt, since the base is slipping out, x is getting larger, this would be 1 half. And so d theta dt is going to be 1 over 26 times negative 13 over 12. And again, I will reduce this. And I get d theta dt is equal to negative 1 over 24 radians per second. A rate of change of an angle is a radian, radians per second.